And that's why I said it's, it would be easy. Ananias thought, you know what? I'm going to be, I want to be a good Christian. I want, to, I want everybody to treat me like Barnabas, so I'm going to sell all my possessions and tell him I sold them all, even though he kept part of the money. Because he wanted that praise. And that's what I mean, it would be easy. It would be easy. But that's not what God requires. God doesn't always require what's easy. He requires what's necessary. Amen? He requires that the people give us so moved and so needed. Which is why so many times, again, if we come before you, we're not going to force you to give. We're going to force you to give as the Spirit has moved you. Another quick practice of the church is they're coming together and they're breaking bread together. Not literally breaking bread together, but as in having a meal together. I was very fortunate a couple weeks ago, I was preaching at a church in Lake Worth um, in West Palm Beach, which, which is where I grew up, and I got to see some brothers and sisters I hadn't seen in years, probably over five, maybe eight years. And we got, after the service, we went over to, uh, to her house, and she made a meal for us, and my wife and I and her, we sat down and we started talking about old times, and I just, I was just so full of joy, I got to tell you. Because something happens when you share a meal with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you haven't done it, then you are missing out. There is something special about that. If you go back to chapter 2, look with me at verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. As they break bread, they're sharing fellowship. They're sharing a glad and sincere moment. Glad and sincere heart. It's hard to be angry at somebody while you're eating. I mean, let's be honest. Gives you a little bit of ulcer, heartburn. It's not good. I mean, I know I'm joking, but seriously, it's hard to be angry at somebody while you're eating. You're sharing a meal together. I mean, you, it's like you kind of know you need to be polite. And something special happens. Because I know, you know, we don't all get along with everybody, and that's fine. We're family. But when you share a meal together, something special happens. And look what they're doing. They're not just doing it at church. It's not just a church function, which I think we've watered down fellowship to just church function time. It's outside of the church. There's still church. Because that fellowship means community. So outside of the community here, there's still community out there. And if you have a need and you just want to get together and you just want to eat, let's do it. And we share and we testify with each other. It's a beautiful thing. Feeling ashamed yet? Okay, let's get to the last one. Maybe that'll help. Prayer. Continual act of worship. And when they got together, they prayed. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. In fact, Luke ends, Luke, his first letter, was saying that when Christ ascended, they stayed and they continually worshipped. And then, you know, when we, once we go into, act, into the book of Acts, they continually worship. They pray together and they worship together. On a continual basis, not just on Sundays, but during the week. If you look with me there on verse 46 and 47, back where we're at in chapter 2, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. That's their form of church. Then they broke together bread in their houses, in their homes. They ate together with glasses your hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Isn't that nice? They actually get along. You know what? Did you know that they got along so well? that they started calling each other's brothers and sisters. And people were just like, what in the world is wrong with y'all? <laughs> there was a letter from um, an early church letter written by somebody, a secular letter, somebody in government. He wrote a letter to an emperor saying, these Christians are a menace. They are just weird. Not only does it seem like they're not praying to any god because they closed their eyes, which by the way, we take that for granted, but they thought that us closing our eyes was strange because there was no idol for us to pray to. So we were a bunch of weirdos for that, first of all. Second of all, he said we were insens insensuous because you're calling each other's brothers and sisters. Like, that's kind of yucky. Like, he thought that we were having relations with each other because we're calling each other's brothers and sisters. And, and back in those days, they, were, they would greet each other with a holy kiss. So it's like, you're kissing your brothers and sisters. Like, these are a bunch of weird people. And then they sell their processions and they help each other. They didn't get it. Much like people today don't get it. They didn't get it. That there was something special about that. And when they got together, they didn't forget to pray. It was a continual act in their worship. And you know, I, people read this sometimes, and I feel like a lot of pastors who preach this passage it sometimes feels like slapping the church with it. Like, look, look how great they were, and you guys are nothing like that. This is what we should strive to. 
But I, I want you to look at one key word, and that's this. They devoted themselves. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship that I speak of, to the breaking of bread and prayer. I mean, this is real beautiful fellowship going on here. And this word devotion, in the context of what we're reading the verse, here's what it means. It means something a little bit like perseverance. To be steadfast, if you're reading King James. A constant act. So, what I'm trying to get across to you is that, don't feel so bad. This is a constant, renewable thing. Because you're not always going to want to break bread with your brothers. You're not always going to want to come hear the apostles' teaching. You're not always going to want to have fellowship. And last one kind of hurts, but you're not always going to want to pray. But that's why we need to be devoted. When you have true devotion, it isn't just a one-time thing. It isn't just a thing of only when you feel like it. It's something you persevere at. My wife and I always say, you know, the time that you need to go to church the most is when you don't want to go. The time that you need prayer the most is when you don't want to pray. The time when you need your brothers and sisters the most is when you don't like them. And the time you need fellowship the most is when you don't want to go to that church function. We need to be truly devoted, not just to God, but to one another. And I think that's the example that the early church tells us. And, it's a, and I'm not saying this is an advertisement for Sunlight Community Church. I'm not giving you the four four points of marketing for Sunlight. If we are truly a church that has the Holy Spirit living in it, these are the four fruits of it. That there's true teaching, that there's true fellowship, that there's true community among the brothers, and that there's prayer. If you don't see that, by all means, you're welcome to leave. Because then we're not doing it right. But if you do see it, you see something beautiful. You see brothers and sisters in Christ with each other. And hopefully they're so joined with one another that when one leaves, it's heartbreaking. I shared this in the first service and, and I asked him if I could share it, but recently we, we lost a sister here in our congregation. Her name was Sue Corey. And um, I got to tell you, when it happened, my wife and I were sitting at our dinner table and we got a little bit choked up about it. And we, we were crying. And then we started, we started kind of smiling. We were saying, man, do you remember when Sue did this? And do you remember when Sue did that? It's hard not to talk about it without getting a little emotional. I remember spending plenty of time with Sue. She would come to volunteer with me at Sun Kids. And we'd have conversations. And it's so hard to think that she's gone. I remember John Planny. And he would come to the church. And he would greet me. And as I share with his wife, I feel so blessed to have known him. I wish I could have known him when he was younger. But the time that I got to know him, I was so privileged. I was so privileged to have known Ernest Little in the time he was here among us. Even the way he was, I got to know him. There's something special that happens when we get together for community. And you just know it because when that person's gone, it just rips you apart. They're gone. But the joy is that they're not completely gone. That we'll get to see them again another day. Amen. As I leave you, I don't want to leave you with that. I want to leave you with this sense that to be devoted. Be devoted to one another. Be devoted in that spirit. If the Holy Spirit is truly living among us, these will be the fruits that we see amongst each other. Amen. As the praise team comes back up, we're going to be singing... Come now is the time to worship, which I think is perfect because that's what we should be doing. We should be saying, come, go to church. Let's be together in community. It's time to worship. It's time to gather together. Let's pray. The Heavenly Father.